how to do setup in Icon 3D. First of all, in this training, we will uh, set up the clock, the time, so the time is correct. You press the icon for the clock down here, and you select the date and the actual time. And right now, it's 9:40. like that and press OK. Now you can see the time changed here. So, um, in Icon 3D um, when you look at the screen now you can see that the, I, the excavator icon here is grey. That means there is some settings that is missing. So what we'll do now is we, we will go through all the settings that needs to be done to be able to run a machine with Icon 3D. First thing, we go for settings, press that one, and on the top here you can see different settings that is already selected, but these are not valid now for the project or this work the machine is going to do, so we're going to do all the steps from pro projects, machine, instrument, surface, help models and localization. First of all, we need to select a project and a project that could be a job site, a construction site. I click the project button and here I have several projects that is already inside of the panel but if you are going to establish a new project or, or there is no project that is valid for what you are going to do then you need to press new project. So I press new project. I type in the project name. I call it demo. Enter. Okay. After that I find my demo. Here it is. And I click that one. So now I have created a new project. And you can see on the top line that it says demo. Next step. <coughs> is to select a machine. So therefore I click the machine button and here I can click and I will see different machines that is already created here on this panel. If I find the machine that is suitable for my work then I just click it but most commonly is that you do this for the very first time and then there is no machines. What you need to do in that case is that you need to press add. And here you will create your machine. First you select what kind of machine it is. If it's a dozer, excavator, grader or wheel loader. We will start to create an excavator. And on the second line here you can type in any individual name. So I just call it demo machine. like that. And now I have created my machine. I press OK. Now I need to do some settings for this machine. First of all I need to select the bucket controller. And that is the 2D system of the machine. I click here and I can find different, sorry, different alternatives. I use the Icon 3D panel, that means I will use the external exit to power digger. There is a spanner here and it says localhost 12346. You will never need to change that one, that will always stay. Next step is to choose a calibration method for my 3D machine. By default it says auto. But if I click, I can also go for none or body. The body selection I need to pick if I only have a single GPS solution on the machine. Uh, but the most common one is that you select auto. And with the auto mode, it will uh, detect by itself if it's a single machine or a dual machine. So select auto. We also look at the spanner. Uh, this spanner here is 
for uh, well, when you have the body uh, selection you need to uh, define the turning radius to be able to calculate the direction of the machine but now if you have a dual um, GPS solution then you don't need to do anything on this page so we go back again max deviation 0 0.1 meter we can leave it as it is because that is also related to single antenna solution and the use external anaerobic display is not valid either on top here you can see this is page one of three so I will continue now to page two on this page I need to type in the values from my 3D calibration so I need to type in the value for GPS X whatever that might be um, and you, you got these values from your calibration so let's say minus 1.5 you have GPS Y that is also a minus on this position here because you have the coordinate system here or the direction of it and you can see it's positive forward and positive to the right so this means minus and minus the roll length and the pitch length is not necessary to type in and the bucket width will be picked up from the 2D system so as long as you have a width of the bucket typed in into the 2D system it will be the same value down here so it will change if you change the bucket then we go to page number three here you got also several spanners the boom length the stick length and the bucket length is mainly for graphic uh, view so um, what I suggest is that you type in the, the same uh, values that you had in the calibration so this might be 6.5 meters for example the stick something around four and a half and the bucket length might be something around one meter no I think I actually yeah sorry I did the wrong one here boom length approximately 6.5 meters like this and then we've got the bucket depth make it one meter so that is only for graphical view the height here the GPS Z or the pole height as it's called uh, should be zero or around zero because that will only calculate the vertical elevation if you type a value in here it will affect the calibration and the calculation of the machine when the machine is sloping and this value will also add on to the value you already typed in in the 2D calibration so leave this for zero and only in extreme cases you need to change it but you should never change it more than let's say maximum 15 centimeters 1.5 centimeters as a maximum because it will affect the position of the machine okay so that means now we are on page three if I go to page one again you recognize the page so now we've calibrated the excavator and I go back and here I can see that I got my demo machine if I'm going to create a doser then I go into the same menu I go to machine I press add and I select doser and I type in uh, the name of the doser and go backwards here doser like that now you can see there is a doser on the screen I press OK and here now I need to select a blade controller and a positioning system 
or position mode. Blade controller is my 2D system on the machine and if it's the Icon 3D panel then you use the internal CB14 power grade. So that's the, the panel. Position mode. This is if I have a single GPS solution or a dual GPS solution. If I press the dual, no, sorry, the single one, and go to page number three, uh, sorry, it's page number two, I will get the definition of my mast height, my blade height, and also blade wear. The different um, heights here will um, will affect the elevation of the antenna and also the position of the blade. The blade wear will be the one that is changed when I do my calibration from the run mode window. But I just click on the arrows here and type in the correct values. On page number three I need to define where the antenna is located on the blade. So I have a total blade width here. I type in the value of the width and after that I type in the distance from the left hand side to the antenna. Okay, and you can see here also there's a indicator showing what the local corner system on the machine is. So the value forward is positive and backwards is ne negative. To the left is positive and to the right is negative. So now I have my demo machine.